So welcome to our episode of Girl Talk, and I would like to introduce the three outstanding girls I have with me today. Each one will say something about herself. Hi, I'm Katrina. I'm a senior in high school, and I'm very excited to be here. Hi, everyone. My name is Catherine. I am a junior at UMBC, and I'm also really excited to be here with you today. Hi, guys. My name is Lena. I'm a first-year graduate, um, and I attend St. Mark's DC, and I'm also very excited to be here. We're discussing today how to be the friend that God called you to be. Right now we're talking about friends that are good influences and bad influences. So what would be a friend that would be a bad influence on you? That should be pretty easy. <laughs> Honestly, I think for me it's a friend that like is constantly, like it's good to have conversations and share feelings with each other, but I think like going off of what Catherine said earlier, I think it's a friend who constantly is... Um, asking you to do everything for her, to be there constantly in her life. And while at some point it's a good thing, there's a point where you need to realize that um, I need to be able to spend time with myself before that. Um, and honestly, I mean, other than the obvious, like, you know, a friend who doesn't um, encourage you, a friend who doesn't hold you accountable, a friend who um, um, puts um, other things before your relationship mm -hmm. that are unhealthy. That's good. Can I actually go off of that really mm -hmm. quickly? So you mentioned, um, you know, the friend that's like always asking something mm -hmm. from you. Um, and I think it's important to note that, you know, we talk about unconditional love and always wanting to be there for your friend. And I agree with that 100%. But I think a misconception of love is that you're constantly doing things mm -hmm. for someone like that. Um, like she's asking you to do this and then that and then this and then that. Um, and I think it's important to note that to a certain extent, it's not love to continue doing that because then your friend doesn't have the opportunity to grow. She doesn't have the opportunity to learn for herself. She doesn't have the opportunity to do things for herself. And in that sense, you know, she's, she doesn't know what the world is like. She's not going to get to learn things on her own. And that's, that's you taking away those opportunities to grow, even if it hurts. And that by itself isn't, isn't really love, you know, like when, when God sent Christ down, you know, he went through the cross, he went through so much hurt, but at the end, the reward was greater, mm -hmm. you know, and that's, mm -hmm. that's love right there. Right. So sometimes, yes, be, be there for your friends, like mm -hmm. do things for them, like express your love. But sometimes like if they're taking advantage of you and you're like, okay with that, or if you are consistently doing things, like I just, I think it's important to like set those boundaries, right. make that distinction when it's love and when it's not. Yeah. That's true. And you know, I used to think for the longest time, I had this one friend and I thought she was a bad influence on me because every time we got together, we would gossip. And I thought she's the one, you know, who's a bad influence on me, which she was because I wouldn't gossip with any of my other friends, but I'd only gossip with her. But then I learned that I also have the tendency to gossip. So when I corrected myself because I wanted to stop, you know, the whole gossip, you know, and I was able to overcome that and change that in my own life, I spoke to her and I said, you know, I've made changes. I don't want to gossip anymore about people. Um, I think we can, you know, spend more quality, better time together doing something else and discussing topics that would be mutually beneficial for both of us. So based on her reaction, you know, if she was to come back and say, oh gosh, Caroline, get over yourself, mm. stop this holier than thou, you know, attitude, then that's someone that I recognize as, okay, you know, I want to be a friend, but now I know not, you know, to set boundaries with her, you know. But if she was to come back and say, I totally agree, you're right, we really shouldn't do that, that's someone that I would want to continue. But I only share that because I want you to really assess the situation when you have a friend who you think is a bad influence. Again, it always goes back to examine your heart first because are they, you know, influencing you to do something that you are already doing or are they um, actually introducing something new to you? Mm. So I just wanted to touch up on that a little bit. Mm. How do you respond to a friend that pushes you away or brings you down? That's a tough one. I. Um... I feel like I have felt this way for a while. I've struggled with um, setting my boundaries, which is why I feel like I 
felt being pushed down a lot by my friends. And like you said, it's sometimes it takes self-examination. It's not always the person in front of you who's hurting you because they want to hurt you. Um, but it's how you receive their, um, like the signals that, you know, from their actions. Um, but if I feel like if someone is just pushing you away, um, maybe then you kind of have to step back and evaluate the situation where it's, it's not, you know, it's maybe they need space mm -hmm. um, to deal with whatever they're going through. It's not always about me. It's not always about what I'm doing to, like, is something wrong with me? You know, like my first instinct is to, is to think like, am I not a good friend? What am I doing wrong? Am I annoying? You know, mm -hmm. uh, so it's like you have to step back to kind of evaluate the situation, like mm -hmm. I said, and realize that maybe they need it for their own growth. Mm -hmm. um, the other thing, if a friend is trying to bring you down, like deliberately, that's a different story. Um, if they, when they see you only constantly point out, you know, the bad in you, then you kind of have to look back and, you know, take a step back and, you know, set boundaries. <laughs> mm -hmm. Well, I think if a friend is putting you down, you'd have to probably better understand that they are the one who's probably struggling. They're, mm -hmm. they're probably struggling, you know, because then they're dragging you down with them. So like you said, I think give them space, mm -hmm. you know, step away, give them time to figure things out. But also, you know, if you, if this is a good friend, I would also approach them and say, is everything okay? Mm -hmm. um, are you doing okay? I'm noticing that, you know, things are getting a little different between us. Have the, have the conversation and then see what happens after that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I've actually experienced that um, with someone who's very close to me and I was concerned as to what was going on because I was like, I, I don't know what I did. And while I like, <laughs> like while I want to be helpful and like be there, like you're not communicating like what's wrong with me. So what's going on? So then um, after I finally, you know, got the guts to, because I'm not very confrontational, like makes me uncomfortable to do that. Um, but like once I finally was like, okay, listen, you've been making these comments and they're kind of hurtful. Like is something going on? Like I, I've been noticing you've been going through something, but like I don't know if you want to process it on your own or if you want to come like talk to me about it. And then we like work through it and everything. But I guess I just am saying that to say that, you know, people process in different ways and it doesn't hurt to reach out and see what's going on because like you said, they could be going through something Maybe they were hurt by something you did and you just don't even know. But like it's important to like have effective communication. Right, exactly. And that's I've learned that the hard way as well. <laughs> but it's important to communicate your feelings. So going off of what Catherine said earlier, um, I was actually in a similar situation with um, one of my friends. Um, and I thought, like we stopped talking and I thought it was something I did and I was hurting from it. And... Um, like going off of what Lena said like about like you don't know what's on the other person's mind. You mm -hmm. don't know what's going on in their lives. And it turned out to be that this person was having a really um, struggling with their relationship with their parents and it was becoming really serious. Mm -hmm. And so I thought it was from my end and I was like, wait, like what did I do? Like how can I fix it? But sometimes um, it's not really about fixing the actual problem, mm -hmm. but it's about stepping back and um, praying for them because mm -hmm. honestly like prayer can really help someone and knowing that person knowing that like you're praying for them can like really leave a huge impact mm -hmm. on them. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah thank you Katrina and um, now we're going to wrap up uh, our discussion today and just to conclude to be the friend that God called you to be you have to build a healthy relationship set boundaries be understanding be kind um, and communicate effectively and definitely it all starts with a personal and an intimate relationship with God first. He's the first friend. Mm -hmm. And then off of that, you'll build long-lasting friendships. Thank you for joining us today, and we'll see you soon.